welcome back to Three Questions Podcast. My name is Cameron King. I am the founder of CK Collective, a marketing and strategy consultancy. Typically, I work with entrepreneurs, uh, people from all over, C-level executives, people starting a business, medium-sized businesses, you name it. I have 12, 13 years working in marketing and advertising, and I love what I do. Originally, I started this business when I got laid off during COVID, like most of us, and this has turned into sort of a legacy project and company where I'm just putting out a bunch of cool content. Things that I've learned, pretty much I try to teach Bring these to my strategy and consulting sessions. Also, my CMO for hire platform that I have on my website, ckcollective.co. I know many of the people that purchase that product, they're the ones submitting the questions, and I really appreciate it. I thought about doing this podcast a little while ago just because I'm always learning. I know a lot of my clients in their sessions sort of bring up these really unique things that I think can be brought to a wider audience. And I wanted to sort of start a podcast just because it's fun and who doesn't like to listen to podcasts. However, I do like to keep these to about 15 or 20 minutes, keep them light and efficient for you so you can keep moving throughout your day. I do not know everything. I tend to give my insight. I tend to get really good questions from my clients and or the audience listening to this. And I tend to research most of them and try to sort of lead you to uh, thinking in a different way, or I will give you the answers to go and find them out yourself. So Today, episode number five, Cinque in Italian. And I want to thank you, Dan. This is your second time submitting questions onto the podcast. Dan from Colorado, uh, one of my current clients, Dan the man. Uh, so let's get into it. I'm going to start my watch here. And I will do all the promo stuff at the end. Uh, timer starts now. Let's go. Number one, what is the best way to shut down anxiety when you start to feel it? whether it's from business, social, or a culmination of everything. I've talked about this a lot, especially with my entrepreneurial clients, okay? You're you're taking a big risk by going into business for yourself, but you wouldn't have started a business if you didn't think you were the best person to do it, right? So anxiety, depression, two really important things to remember. Anxiety comes from you living in the future and worrying about things that are completely out of your control, things that haven't happened yet. Okay. Depression comes from living in the past. Okay. Regretting mistakes, regretting things that you, that happened that you didn't do. And all you can do is really sort of try to live in the moment. Okay. One of my favorite sayings that I heard uh, from someone at some point, they said, wherever my feet are, that's where my mind is. Okay. So if you can metaphorically imagine yourself dropping a big anchor, wherever you are, and just saying in your head, wherever my feet are, that's where my mind is. That's a good way to center yourself. Okay. But when you experience anxiety, I need you to remember, this happens to everybody, it happens to me, and you have to understand that you are literally trying to live in the present. You're trying to control things in the future that haven't happened yet. Ask yourself why, okay? Do you need control, okay? Can you control that thing, yes or no? If you can't control it, can you embrace it, yes or no? Okay, maybe I can't control it, maybe I can't embrace it, so why am I expending my own energy worrying about that thing, okay? Why am I worried about something in the future that I have little to no ability to, to control of right now, okay? There's a very good book called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer that I would recommend to anybody listening to this podcast. That is really a book about surrendering to the flow of life. And in the book, he talks about why do we as human beings think we can get more for ourselves than the universe, life, whatever can bring to us, okay? And that's a really, really good way for me to remember that. I also think about this quite often and said, I am such a small human being here for a temporary amount of time in a seemingly endless universe that has been around for billions of years. And I am on a tiny rock surrounding, surrounding and, and rotating around an insignificant star floating on the outer edges of space. What am I really worried about? Okay. Life is very insignificant when we tend to zoom out and look at this, okay? Everybody suffers from anxiety. I would highly recommend that if you are experiencing anxiety from your business or your social meetings or a culmination of everything, perhaps your relationship, I would spend time journaling, okay? I would spend time journaling to, why am I worried about this? Can I control this? Can I embrace this? That is sort of my diatribe about trying to figure out 
where this anxiety is coming from. Okay, I'm worried about this event tomorrow, but that person is free to make their own decisions. I can't control them. I don't want to control them. I would rather retain that energy and just kind of surrender to whatever happens, happens. I have thought about my life in a number of ways and everything that has worked out, even when I didn't understand it in the moment, everything has always worked out for the better. Sometimes it's taken me days, weeks, months, years to realize, holy shit, that thing that happened was the best thing that ever happened to me. Okay. Life has never led me astray. It's brought me down some strange roads and I couldn't have made this story up if I wanted to so far, but anxiety and depression will make you question everything. And instead of questioning everything and wasting your damn energy, you need to slow it down, okay? Because when we lean into anxiety or when we lean into depression, right? Again, I'm gonna say this again. Anxiety comes from trying to live in the future. Depression comes from trying to live or change the past. And when we lean into those things, we cause friction, okay? And whenever we cause friction in our own lives, things will happen slowly, okay? Think about two pieces of sandpaper rubbing against each other. That's going to go pretty slow. Okay. So you trying to control the situation in the future or the past, which you can't change will only cause friction and will only cause you to move forward slower in your life. Let it go. Meditate, slow down. Okay. Also, how do I shut down anxiety? I take freezing cold showers. I have had to do this a lot lately. I'm trying to do this every single day. And I have been so far for about two weeks. I will take two minutes of a freezing cold shower. When I get out, huge release of dopamine. That erases my anxiety. Also, I run. Endorphins will erase anxiety. Go for a run. Take a cold shower. Meditate. Understand you're trying to control stuff. Let that go. Instead, slow down. Release the friction. Come back to the present moment. That is really all I can do. And of course, we're out of time for question number one. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, send me an email, three questions podcast at gmail.com or info at ckcollective.co. Question number two, if you had to give me a three month plan to get shredded, what would you tell me to do? What habits should I stop or start? Okay. If you have a three month plan to get shredded and Dan, I know you and I have talked about this before. So you know what I'm going to say here, okay? If you had a three-month plan to get shredded, here's what I would do, okay? Number one, number one, before you do anything, because you can go to the gym for three hours a day, every single day, but if your diet and your sleep sucks, are you going to get shredded? No. You have got to sleep at least seven to eight hours a night, okay? Don't sleep with your phone in the bedroom. Don't do it. Also, When you go grocery shopping, only shop on the outside of the grocery store, okay? I had a very interesting conversation with a stranger the other day about this. And I told him, I said, hey, one of the best things I ever learned was I only shop on the outside of the grocery store. I go to the vegetable section first, and I fill up my cart with a bunch of vegetables. Okay, first of all, I only get a a hand cart, okay? I don't get a push cart because if I go to the grocery store every two to three days, I'm always going to get fresh veggies. And I put all of the veggies in the bottom so that I don't put heavy stuff on top of that and crush them, okay? This is like a mental game. And maybe I'm a psychopath. I don't know. You guys can tell me. You can comment on this. But I will only shop on the outside of the grocery store, okay? Start with vegetables first, right? Then I'll go to the back area where there's typically the meats, okay? Maybe I'll get some sauces along one of the the side aisles as well. And then I sort of go over to the eggs and I'll put the eggs on top. And then I, I circle out. I'll go to the grocery store every, you know, two to three days at the earliest or maybe, you know, three to four days. So I typically go about twice a week and I'll get stuff that way so that I can carry it out. And it's a mental trick, right? I only use olive oil right? Or I'll use coconut oil as well, but you need to, you need to find foods that eliminate um, your, your ability to get inflammation. And I can speak more about that on a different thing, but I want to answer your question. So I'll only eat fresh foods, okay? Natural foods, a lot of vegetables, typically about 45 to 54% of all my meals are full of carbohydrates, sweet potatoes, rice, quinoa. Um, About another 25% are mostly vegetables, typically broccoli, Brussels sprouts, And then I'll do, you know, 15 per, mm, then I'll do probably the rest about protein as well. So protein uh, will probably make up about another 20 to 25% of my meal. 
and then 25% vegetables, and then, you know, 45 to 55 or 54% carbohydrates. And these will sort of differ for everybody, but because I'm so active, I work out about two or three times a day, I need that amount of carbs, okay? And I eat typically the same things for all of my meals so that I don't have to worry about it. So when I go to the grocery store, it's automatic, okay? Now, second half of your question, three month plan to get shredded. Bro, you need to run four or five times a week, max. You should be jogging 30 minutes a day, okay? 20 to 30 minutes a day, four to five times a week. That will, number one, it will start burning your body fat, okay? If you run early in the morning, your metabolism spikes throughout the rest of the day, your body's gonna create actual naturally good foods. This is step one, okay? Slower runs will burn more fat than if you're sprinting and trying to run fast, which burns carbohydrates and not fat. Okay. If you need more info on that, I will tell you again, email me, hit me up from, from on WhatsApp, whatever you need. Now you should be lifting heavy weights all of the other times. Okay. But lifting heavy weights will build more muscle. If you're trying to get shredded. Okay. You should probably lower the weight, but up the reps. Okay. I tend to think that, you know, a, a set of five by five is really a good way to build strength in terms of back squat or bench. But if I were you, I would probably do eight sets of eight, right? On bench or back squat, maybe not at your max weight, but do a bunch, a bunch of push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups as well. Push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, running. They do this in the military quite often and they can do hundreds of reps. They often do hundreds of reps a day, okay? A workout like Murph will do you really well. I would say run four, four to five times a week. And if you're doing maybe hundred to 200 push-ups a day, it's going to get you shredded in three months regardless, okay? These are probably the baseline things. Again, it's so different for everybody because we have different nutritional requirements and physical requirements. But again, if you're not sleeping and eating well, it doesn't matter how long you go to the gym, okay, brother? Uh, that's close to 10 minutes. So if you have anything else there, again, you know how to hit me up. I'm happy to help. I love talking about this stuff, okay? Let's move on to question number three, though. How can I make a decision on what I want to do for my career? How do I know I'm on the right path? Or is it possible to do more than one thing? I love three questions in one, okay? So here's what I'll underline for you. How can I make a decision on what I want to do for my career? Is it the right path? Or is it possible to do more than one thing? It's always possible to do more than one thing, okay? I do more than one thing. This you know, strategy legacy company that I've sort of put together is to help me learn and help share knowledge with others on YouTube, on this podcast, all my current clients, they teach me new things every single day. And if you are not learning new things throughout the rest of your life, what are you doing? Okay. You need to put yourself in rooms where you're not the smartest person in your room and you can always learn from, from multiple people. If Elon Musk can run, you know, how many different companies is he putting together? Four, five, six then you can figure out how to do multiple things as well, okay? It's more about discipline. It's more about scheduling. It's about setting proper boundaries. Those are probably deeper conversations we can dive into in the podcast. But what would you tell me, or excuse me, how can I make a decision on what I want to do for my career? How do I know if, if I'm on the right path? You should always be learning. That's how you know you're on the right path, okay? When you are on the right path, little synchronicities will start to happen, right? You're going to get more business. You're going to get people to come into your life to teach you, teach you things. The right people are going to be in the right places at the right time for you when you're on the right path. Okay. If you're not on the right path, it's very easy to figure that out because you are going to experience a lot of friction. You're going to experience a lot of roadblocks. You're going to experience a lot of things that take your breath out, that take your energy out. Okay. Jim Carrey talks about this on a lot of his more recent videos from the past couple of years, right? He talks about depression being the sort of avatar that looks at you in the mirror and says, Hey, I'm tired of playing this character. Okay. When you start to feel that way, when you start to feel tired of playing this character that you think you need to be, and it's requiring energy for you to put on this front in your own life, okay? And it's not bringing you an ROI. That's how you can tell that you're not on the right path. That's how I sort of identify it, right? If I'm showing up to a place and I have to really force myself to be someone that I think I need to be in order to be successful in that thing, and it's draining me, that's how I know I'm on the wrong path. And I tend to pay attention to that. It hasn't always been hasn't always played out well for me, right? Because some of these scenarios will take time to sort of get out of, but you have to be honest with yourself. And the best way to know if you're on the right path, I think, right, is to really sit down in deep meditation. Sometimes I'll meditate for as long as an hour or 45 minutes. Typically I meditate for 25 minutes a day and I journal 
and I run and I'll, I'll pray to the universe and be like, Hey, show me a sign. Help me out here. How do I know I'm on the right path? Please take care of this for me because I, I don't know what to do. I surrender to whatever sort of life can bring me. And if you know, you're on the right path, you're going to get the energy that you need to, to do the things that you want to do, right? You get excited. All of a sudden you're working on a Friday night. All of a sudden you're working in the middle of a Saturday at 12, 15, like I am right now putting together a podcast because this is stuff that you love to do and it gives me energy. That's how you know you're on the right path. So I need you to pay attention to that. And when we try to busy ourselves or distract ourselves, typically we're doing that because we're not enjoying the thing that we actually have to do, okay? So pay attention to these things. And by slowing down, you're gonna be able to notice more and work more efficiently with that. The first part of your question is, how do I make a decision on what I want to do for my career? Man, everybody deals with this. Everybody deals with the imposter syndrome, right? And what I'll say about how do you make a decision on what I want to do for my career? Here are two things you should, you should know. As long as you were learning and as long as you were growing, you're in the right place right now. Okay. If you can learn and you can grow, you can grow your network, you can grow your finances, you can grow your knowledge base, you can grow your business, you can grow your friend group, your contacts, your LinkedIn, whoever, your skills. As long as you can grow, you're in the right place. Okay. Now, there's a very, very cool Navy SEAL video that I saw recently. It, it talked about how guys that go through Navy SEAL training, if they aren't all in all the time, they're not going to succeed. And I would say for every major elite military organization, when you are doing something, if you do it half-assed, it's not even worth doing. Okay, You have to be all in all the time. And there's a time and a place where you can decide, hey, I'm not all in all the time. I'm going to do something different. But do it and you own it. The faster that you do it and you own it, Seth Godin talks about this in his book, The Dip. You know, successful people will quit off and they'll quit early. Hey, I'm not all in on this thing. You know, I'm going to go out and do everything. So if you can be all in all the time on what you're doing, you're on the right path, right? Learn, grow, adapt. But if you find yourself not being all in all the time, it's okay to quit and move on to the next thing. Why wouldn't it be? Quit early, quit often. That's how successful people will find the right path for them. And if you question on a daily basis, that's probably something for you to listen to while you meditate or while you journal or while you go for a walk in the woods, find a way to listen to what's in here. Okay. Your heart and your brain are two very unique things. And when they're both in coherence with each other, it's called heart brain synchronicity. You can't ever make a bad decision. So that's something I wish more people would learn about. I'll talk about that in another podcast because my time is up. It's been 15 minutes. So again, Dan from Colorado, thank you for sending in your questions on these. I hope I answered them. Reach out to me on WhatsApp or email or privately if you want to talk more about these things. Uh, my name is Cam King. You can find more information about me and book sessions at ckcollective.co. I also just launched a sponsorship for the podcast. You can sponsor a 30-second spot um, for each episode here. And the price is the cost of the episode. So the next episode I'm going to do, episode six, you can sponsor that for $6. Okay. You can also book that on the website, ckcollective.co slash three hyphen questions, hyphen podcasts. Go there, book a sponsorship, send me your copy. I'll read it out at the beginning of the sessions. Uh, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, like, listen on Spotify, rate it, and send in more questions. I appreciate you as always. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Thank you.